Hi, my name's Rick Stanton, known around here as Real Rick. I'm the one of the two people that went to Thailand initially from the UK and was one of the pair of divers who first found the boys uh, after they'd been missing for 10 days. PJ, the producer, contacted us way back in, I think, October 2018 and we were in negotiations with him for quite a while and other people before we decided to team up with him and make the film. Um, but we had no idea who was going to make it, who was going to fund it, who was going to direct it. It just seemed like our best option at that time and it paid off. When we first found out it was wrong, it was quite exciting because obviously uh, the direct comparison is Apollo 13. I'm sure that's most of our, our sort of type of person that's our favorite one of our favorite films that stood the test of time and for him to be telling a reenactment of something that had already happened uh was really good and he was like passionate about telling it with drama and accuracy uh and although he actually didn't know so many details what just what he said resonated with all of us as as being the person to do it i was 17 years old uh, I'd grown up watching uh, Jacques Cousteau, who was quite popular on the television back then. So I was grown up looking at that, interested in the underwater world. But there happened to be one programme on the telly one evening, and it was about cave diving in the UK. And there was just something about it that resonated with me. And I looked at it and knew that's exactly what I want to do, be a cave diver. There was a UK caver living in that region called Vernon Unsworth. He is pretty much the expert on Tam Luang, that cave, and he was involved very early on in the rescue efforts. And he understood that what, despite there being hundreds of people on the scene, that it needed specialist cave diving rescuers. And he put forward my name, along with John Valanthan and Rob Harper, as people he knew that had experience in Rob's case of the cave and in John in my case of cave diving rescues. He, he understood that clearly that's what was missing and what was needed. Uh, Vigo's playing myself uh, and I've been interacting with him for probably four or five months now. Um, just talking through the script, him getting to know me, getting to know my accent. I met, met up with him before. Uh, and it's just interesting seeing him as he gets got to learn me more. A lot of people think that when we found the boys, that was a really exciting moment and really joyous, which, I mean, it was, but it was uh, hugely tempered by the responsibility of knowing that it would probably be fall on our shoulders to bring them out, and we had no idea how to do that. So even whilst we were with them on that first encounter and then the dive out, we were just lost in thought. You know, how on earth are we going to get them out? Talking more specifically about Vigo, he's clearly a water person. I identify people as water people, people that are happy in the water. Vigo's clearly that, he's a, he's a swimmer. He, he's, he loves being in the water. The conditions, firstly underfoot, were horrendous. It was ankle deep mud. It was raining continuously for at least 36 hours. There were people everywhere, milling around, nobody, no coordination. I'm not sure we really were overwhelmed with the chaos, to be honest. The water was really strong. It was really fast flowing. It, it was hard to walk against it. This isn't just diving, we're mainly walking, but very fast flowing. You had to know how to operate in, in, in moving water conditions. That was challenging and could have been dangerous. Uh, but there was another section in the flooded bit of cave, just approaching chamber four, where there was a very tight slot we had to negotiate uh, and the line was quite tricky and intricate. We could have probably bypassed that, but we didn't have time. We just left it as it was. And that that was sort of the danger area. And that's where uh, Chris got into trouble later on in the, in the rescue, on the last day of the rescue. So leading up to the last boy coming out, there was no certainty that we'd get them all out alive. So even when we had 12 out and we were waiting for the last one. There was still no certainty we'd have 100% success. It was only when that last boy came out 
alive that we were able to, and we were all in the third chamber. And that was quite a moment because then it was only then we could all relax. I know everybody in the world was watching the, the events and I understand that most people were emotionally involved in, in the, the boy's fate, but I'd like them to know what was involved in, in delivering the boys. And also the fact, you know, how it all came together, the, the, you know, the collaboration, the planning, all those things aligning 